because fruit is like the stock market it moves every day yeah the prices move yeah so you have to always be watching their price sheets and order from here order from here it's still it's not the easiest thing we need to hire a purchasing manager for that to be yeah. able to be watching it all the time yeah andy handles all that right now okay <laughs> Hey, what's going on, guys? We're back for another episode of Defining Success with Matt Foster. I got my good friend Larry here today. He is the CEO and owner with his business partner, Andy, of Mango Crazy. Amazing quick serve uh, restaurant, a lot of cool products. Nobody else really doing what they do in the space. So I'm excited to sit down today. I'm excited to sit here with Larry. I uh, appreciate you being on the podcast no today. No problem. Yep. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Love being here with you guys. So Yeah. Awesome. Um, where we usually like to start off in the podcast is where you are today. It kind of gives a little perspective on the impressiveness of what you build, and then we'll kind of go backwards from there and build up in the story of how you guys got to where you're at today. So, Larry, you know, and your and your partner Andy, where are you guys at today with Mango Crazy? So we have 23 locations across two states. Okay, um, all operating. We have food trucks included in the in that number. So. Uh, you know, we move around a lot. We we try to find new locations that, that are going to work for us. And, you know, we, we work really hard, man, every day to make this possible for our customers and, you know, put a smile on people's faces. It's important to us. Yeah. You know? Love it. Love so, it. And then uh, as far as employees goes, how big is your labor force at this at this we're point? We're at about 150 employees right now. Got it. Got it. And then uh, as far as, you know, what's next for you guys, I know that you guys have been kind of playing with the idea of continuing uh, to partner and have partnerships yeah. and possibly do franchising. Is that something that you guys are still uh, kind of in the books and, and yeah. deciding if it's uh, what's the best path forward for you guys? Exactly. So we're on the fence with franchising. We have you know, all of our paperwork filled out. Okay. We're just deciding because we find that partnerships and, and owner operators that are our friends first deserve a shot. Yeah, you know, no. and then after that, we can go into franchising and, and see how that works. I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I I believe that you guys have really built a successful business mm -hmm. of raving fans. It's one location, then two, and then now we're at 23, yeah. right? And I think the employees play a big part of that, you know, being front-facing to your customers, yes. loving what they're doing, you loving the partners that you guys are working with, yeah. um, especially when we're working hard, at least trying to make it a little bit fun, right? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. They're, they're my family. All of our employees were family. We're family. I like to get to know them on a personal level and and help. You know, if anything, if they come across anything that I can help them with in their personal lives, I try to be involved and help. Yeah, you know, no, I love so, that. And I I can tell from watching you from afar and knowing you as a friend, you yeah. have a real servant's heart. Yeah. You really care about people. I think that's what's required um, to build a business that continues to grow and have success. Right. Is actually, uh, you know, owners eating last, right? right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take it, take it back now. So, you know, to get to this big scale, there's always an origin story. There's always that first store or the first concept or idea. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what you and Andy were doing in 2014. Uh, you know, maybe even a little bit before you started your first shop, which was, which was an ice cream yeah. shop. Um, what were you guys, how did you guys know each other? And then what led to opening a business together in 2014? So I've known Andy since he was in diapers. We were neighbors. Okay. A few houses down, but yeah. you know, I hung out with his older brother. He's my age. So yeah. we hung out and Andy was always there. That's nice. and so we grew up, you know, through high school. I went to college, so we kind of created some space there, but kept in touch. Yeah. Uh then Andy, you know, got into construction. I was an administrator when I got out of college from for a fifty two bed assisted living facility. Okay. So I started working that and I'm getting all these checks and, and people are writing checks to me, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars because they trust me to be put into this assisted facility. So cool. like, man, I, I got to figure something out for myself. Like I got to do business for myself. If I yeah. can get this to happen, why not do it for myself? Sure. So Andy was kind of in the same boat. You know, he's doing construction. He's getting checks for people. He's like, man, I want to work for myself. So we got together. We started talking about, you know, doing business. And we didn't know what kind of business was going to come up. So Andy was on Craigslist one day and found an ice cream shop for sale. That's our Floyd location. And so we decided to take a dive. We're like, man, it's a business ice cream. How bad can it be? Frozen product. So we negotiated with the guy on February 13th that night. I feel like we got, you know, a good deal on the location. So we went ahead and took the leap of faith and bought the location. The next is Valentine's Day. 
or like, let's stay open. Maybe people will come here for dates. It's ice cream. Let's give it a shot. From that day forward, we didn't close for like a year and a half other than Christmas and Thanksgiving. Wow. So we put in a lot of work in the beginning. So Val- Valentine's Day, February 14th, You is it just you and Andy? You guys threw some aprons on and like, yeah. all right, let's get the... Uh, let's get it. these ice cream out to the customer and, and just got behind the counter. Knowing was, nothing about the business. Was there, so there was no ramp up. There was no, was, was there any shadowing of kind of what nothing. the owner, owner no. did? He just gave you guys the keys and said yes. kind of a little basic, uh, yeah. you know, uh, timeline of what he does. And then, then here you at go. Best. I just want to get cashed out. Yeah. At yeah. best. Got it. So we went in there, we figured everything out. We talked to a lot of the customers, um, seeing what they wanted, you know, cause he had like a mingo nada on the menu. Okay. So, you know, we just developed it with customer feedback, put our twist to it. Yeah. And it started working. Was there uh was it a certain type of ice cream? Was it like just regular ice cream? Was it gelato? Was it Mexican ice sorbet, cream? Sorbet. Yeah. Mango sorbet was his main ice cream, but he okay. had dairy ice cream throughout. Got it. So, you know, there was options for customers. Yeah. Yeah. So the seed was planted for mango crazy in the ice cream store, what was that ice cream store originally called? Or when you guys took it over, what was the name of that ice cream store? It was called Paletelandia. Nice. Which, you know, it wasn't really attractive to the customer in, in that area in Village One. But yeah. we knew what it was. Yeah. So it lacked, you know, a lot. It, li- it lacked some clientele. clarity on yeah. kind of the, the vision of what it is. People are looking yeah. at like, uh, like, so you were probably even having trouble getting people in the oh, door. Yeah. Unless, yeah. unless they had been there before and tried the product. The biggest part of it is you need an inviting brand exactly. that brings people in. When uh, when did you guys uh, kind of hit the next fork in the road for, all right, we're running this ice cream shop. We're not taking any days off. We're working our yeah. faces off. At what point did you guys decide, hey, you know what? Um, we've we've taken all this customer feedback. We're going to start pivoting. And and or when, when did the name kind of come about for Mango Crazy? You know, it... It got a lot more difficult after we started because we weren't prepared for what was to come. Okay. When nobody told us, hey, you're going to be in here seven days a week to try to build a business. Yeah. So it's kind of caught by surprise. We just went in there and started doing it. Yeah. And there were a lot of bumps in the road, you know, like I got a good job offer right after we opened mm. when no customers were coming in. And, you know, and like I said, I went outside, I took the phone call, they offered me this position and I look inside and I see Andy washing dishes and I'm like... I can't leave my boy. You know, one yeah. thing that we learned in the streets was loyalty. Yeah. You yeah. Know? You so I wasn't going to leave him. You can, know? can, can leave your, your good guys behind. Yeah. So, um, was this kind of also trying to pull you back into the space that you were in prior in the medical field, right. senior, right. senior living yes. community. Yeah. Um, and that, and that's where it goes guys. I think, um, sometimes the temptation will be that when you start your own, when you start your own business, it's going to be a lot tougher than you expect. You're going to have to yeah. sacrifice more than you want oh, to. Yeah. So you really got to make sure uh, that the purpose behind what you're doing is greater uh, than the pain that you're going to yeah. withhold, right? Yeah. Um, so Barry's a testament here. You know, everyone can look at somebody's success today and say, hey, how nice is that, right? But at that time, you know, when you got kids, when you have a yeah. family and you got a six-figure job on the line, um, what choice do you make? Are you going to right. stick it out when there's no promise of success? It could still fail. Or uh, are you going to go back to the job, you know, and, and you have to do what you have to do. But apparently, Larry, you got to you got to make a choice in that moment. And, and did that create like us, like solidify what you and oh, Andy yeah. were doing, kind of yeah. a, like a whole nother level yeah. of commitment and passion behind, hey, mm-hmm. we're going to make this thing work no mm-hmm. matter what. It's like you can pivot, but we're going to make it work no matter what. And when we're committed to each other yes. to do this. Yeah. And, you know, it our backs were to the wall at that point. Okay. Because there's no you know, no second plan. Like there, there was nothing else there. Yeah. I'd already given that up. I'm already yeah. hung up the phone. Yeah. So now it's like, Hey, sink or swim. Yeah. You know, no options. So, okay. you know, Andy was, was in the same mindset. So, okay. you know, we started working in the beginning. It, it was hard to get over that because we didn't have customers coming in. It was slow. We're sitting there. Kind of, we worked our butts off, even though nobody was there. We try to make the place better try to make our processes better yeah you know while nobody was coming in we tried to build those things while that was happening yeah you know and i gotta tip my hat to andy because he was really the the guy that moved to the back he wouldn't let a customer come in and not let out a quality piece of product Mm. you know and i was the guy in the front naturally that didn't want to leave leave anybody without a smile yeah everybody had to smile when they were leaving and so that we just naturally gravitated to our spots and and it worked thank god yeah. You know? So yeah, Andy, Andy's making sure you guys have a really quality product. 
You're right. making sure customer service is on point, leaves us fine. And then and you guys are basically forging what is basically the, the handbook for exactly. for success. Right. And then also listening to your customers. If they start complaining about a certain really? thing over and over again, maybe maybe it's not that they don't know what they're talking about. Maybe uh maybe they're actually right. right. The customer yeah. customer is is right sometimes, right? And then so as you guys are forging ahead, I imagine that you're kind of growing the business now. You're starting to get some more customers. Right. What uh, What was the next pivot point for uh, start having the business become more of what it is today and then also the name changing? When when did that start coming to fruition? So the name change happened immediately. We okay. Had, we had to get a business license, so we had like 24 hours to choose a name. We put okay. a bunch of names in a hat, and that's where it came out. Nice. go crazy. Yeah. So no, there's not I, a lot I, of thought behind it, but- you know, a lot of different options, and that's the one that came out. So. Yeah, I, I I love the name Mango Crazy. By the way, I think yeah. I think he explains it. It's a fun brand. It's healthy right. food. It's it's fruit right. related, right? Like I, I think people can get it. Um, so was that in 2014 or was that in 2015? That was in 2014. Okay, yeah, got it. For so our not, first location, not not too long after you yeah. guys purchased the spot. The, the next it. day. Okay. Yeah. And then once once the name changed, because this has a funny effect too. Once you guys had that name, like all right, we're Mango Crazy. When did menu items start? evolving towards what it is now you know that happened over some time i okay. want to say like within six months we because the gentleman didn't even sell uh aguas frescas for yeah. example yeah so we brought those in we okay. started testing and and and, t- and talk about agua frescas a little bit i know that's something you guys have daily yeah. what what is that item and i know it's flavored water yeah yeah fruit infused waters okay and so we started developing those and getting getting ideas from the street vendors and everything like that like what flavors are popular what tastes good. Yeah. And, you know, we went from there. The ceviche yeah. also, like, you know, people were selling ceviche. We wanted to come up with something good. We tested a lot of different things, you know. Did you guys have to go through a lot of different vendors to find ones that had, like, the, quali- yeah. the quality, yeah, too? Because yeah. a big part, I think, um, is inconsistency when uh, when we go to different restaurants, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Which is, if I have the same burger, I, I have an idea in my head yeah. what, it, what it should taste like. And if 10 different times it tastes different, even if it's good... Um, there, the, that creates a little bit less loyalty to the brand. It's, you know, the places that we love in and out burger Panda, a- anywhere else, right. The reason that they win sometimes even over maybe what would be considered a better place is just because like, Hey, I'm, it, it's going to be what I yeah. want. Even if it's, even if it's a little bit less quality sometimes, right. It's that seven out of 10, but it's a seven out of 10 that I expect in my mind. Yes. So it just, it's just easy. It's easy in that way. Yeah. So it was a lot of trial oh, and yeah. error for finding vendors that match. Your guys seem quality of like what you wanted yeah. to deliver, not just one watermelon is not any watermelon. Right. One mango is not is not the same. So at first we went through a lot of different vendors. We even started buying fruit at the flea market because we okay. didn't know where to get it. Sure. We're overpaying, obviously. You yeah. Know, we're bringing everything in. And then we started, you know, digging around. Once we had more time and brought in some employees, yeah. we were able to go out and see what was out there as far as fruit vendors and who's available to, to deliver the product and- you know, we sat with Cisco, you know, all the big brands and started solidifying our name. And and as we grew, we got better deals, obviously. But sure. Yeah, it took some groundwork. We yeah. had to figure that out. Nobody tells you in the game who's out there for that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's so competitive. And and one of the beautiful things of being at least in the Central Valley here with, with your guys start is that we do have access to a lot of good Hell fresh yeah. produce here. Right. We're, we're an agricultural center. Yeah. Um, is has there ever been any partnerships that have involved kind of vertically integrating um, the fruit that you guys are buying and like kind of controlling the product? Or at this point, there's just some vendors that you just have a lot of trust with that provide the product that that you need. Yeah, at, at this longevity, point. trust, and doing business with people. Some vendors may have better pricing on mangoes and others on pineapples or strawberries. Sure. So it's like you got to get you got to source from here for certain things. So we have like five, six different vendors. Yeah, to create, just in case to create the, options. Because fruit is like the stock market. It moves every day. Yeah. The prices move. Yeah. So you have to always be watching their price sheets and order from here, order from here. It's still, it's not the easiest thing. We need to hire a purchasing uh, manager for that to be yeah. able to be watching it all the time. Yeah. Andy handles all that right now. Okay. So it's a game game of inches because sometimes like if you could really get it right, that 10 cents here, 10, it, and, and, yeah. and just yeah. to give scale a little bit, how many pounds of fruit are you guys ordering every month for all your locations? What well, like on average? Doing two pallets of mangoes probably a week or so right now. Okay. Which is like 280 cases mm. per pallet. Okay. So, I mean, and then a pallet of pineapples, just a lot of fruit. It comes yeah. in. It just yeah. really depends. Like 
for example, in March is usually typically our best month. Well, this month it rained all month in March. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our, as expected, like our vendors are usually prepared for the for the better weather. So they were bringing in pals. We're like, hey, we got to slow this down a little bit. The weather affects us. Yeah. As it does a lot of restaurants. Though. Yeah. You kind of got to play the gas and the brake yeah. a little bit for yeah. what you guys are ordering based on your seasons. And then um, I guess with this being kind of the fun brand that it is, right? I, I imagine people eat it and drink it all year round. But of course, yeah. summer months when you get into fruits and oh, colder, yeah. colder yeah. stuff, right? Um, summer months are better. What, um, what do you guys usually do during the winter to make sure that you're a business that still kind of continues through winter right. seasons that are a little bit, that could be a little bit leaner, a little bit tougher to, and, and also thrive in, uh, in the summer months. What, well, what's some of your guys' strategy there? You know, we've been looking at a lot of different options for the winter because okay. we do slow down considerably. Sure. So we brought in the mini pancakes. I think the machines are behind us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is popular. Yeah. You know, we advertise a lot, you know, for seasons changing over mm-hmm. and just, you know, bring in different items. We test a lot still. Yeah. You know, we're still in the infancy of our business cycle. So, so, you know, who we are, what we are, you know, we're very family oriented. So we try to bring products that are warm for everybody. The corn is warm. You know, yeah. people like that a lot in the winter. Yeah. No, the street corn, street corn is amazing, yeah. guys. If you guys haven't, haven't had the, the street corn or the ceviche here, this, you know, you're, you're missing out. You're missing out cool. big time. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's been. So it's always, always a process of ideation, testing, yes. figuring out, right? How many how many products haven't made it to the menu? How it's many? Been quite a few. Okay. Yeah, there's probably been you know ten or twelve that we've brought in. Yeah. And then we cycle them out if they're not you know a big hit or anything like that. So. Yeah. And kind of I imagine that that's also taking the ego out of it sometimes because I think personally sometimes oh, we think yeah. hey this one's gonna this yeah. one's just gonna hit yeah. and then uh, and then you bring it and then the public gets to decide if yeah. something's good or not and then something that you kind of like oh well yeah let's just give it a try and, and it ends up being. The thing that really that right. really blows up, right? Yeah. So, kind of uh, a big part of success, right, is having your ego out of right. the items that you're bringing out in, and let the market kind of decide yeah. what 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 wins and what what doesn't. And that's right? tough too, because it may be the best thing to some people, yeah, and then not so good for other people, and then they get mad when we pull it. Yeah, it's kind of a lose lose when you test. Understood. You know? but, yeah, you know the key is is you want everybody to like it and bring yeah. it in like. And, our- and and kind of following even like Starbucks sometimes like limited runs right yeah. limited runs that's a good way to test something right it's yeah. like hey it's only it only was supposed to be available for a season and then you have like yeah. kind of a an end date and a start date yeah. on when when you introduced it yeah. right um, no it's beautiful I I really love kind of where you guys started where you guys have gotten to today um, one point that I think we haven't focused on is that you guys have expanded right you have two stores in Arizona yeah um, you guys have one on Fisherman's Wharf yep um, you guys have some major partners that can't be spoken about Kevin Harrington I believe we can talk about that a little bit yeah. you know one of the original shark tank guys he's he's yeah. part partnered up and um, uh, been integral and in, in kind of seeing some of maybe the the bigger vision of where Mango Crazy could go. Talk a little bit about your stores that are out of the Central Valley in Arizona, um, Fisherman's Wharf, and, sure. then, and then also um, kind of some of the catering you guys do for like Facebook and some of these uh, bigger tech companies that that really want uh, you know something fun and fresh for their for their employees. Yeah. And you know, not everything is so pretty and cut and dry. Sure. So the locations that are further away are a lot harder to manage. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's a real test, and I got to figure that out. Yeah. Other companies have figured it out. Um, we're still, you know, testing and, and trying to figure different things out because they're hard to manage. If you're not there and and they're operating it differently than you would, there's an effect to that. Sure. You know, something happens where, you know, not everybody likes to come in. They don't have the same. You know that the local stores have like the our presence. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to answer your question, um, let's go back a little bit to back to the investors. And okay. Stuff. So, we opened Kansas, which is a drive-through. Yeah. That's our second location. Yeah. Because Floyd was so, we had a line out the door almost every day. We figured it'd probably be a good idea to open up a second store across town. Sure. To you know lighten the load off off Floyd. So when we did that, we opened the store. It got really popular. There was cars all the way around the drive-thru. And these an investor came through the drive-thru and said, what the heck is this? Different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, fell in love with it immediately. Yeah. So he said, hey, reach out to these guys to, you know, his partner, see if, you know, if they want to grow. And so they reached out. We had a, still have a lot of people that, you know, call us or send us emails that say, hey, we want to do something with you guys, but we don't take them all. You sure, know, it's sure. just the ones that we feel are, you know, a little more serious and 
And so this one seemed really serious. So we met with, with the main investor in Lodi and he's like, Hey, I think you guys got something great here. Let's see what we can do. I got this team. I could put it together. Kind of the Avengers of the restaurant business. Okay. You know, Very so cool. they, they, you know, sent us a real estate guy, uh, uh, a real estate guy. They sent us an architect. They sent us a PR guy. They sent us all these uh, restaurants here, kept Sweeney. And, you know, he's responsible for the success of Applebee's and some steakhouses. And he's, so, uh, he is uh, uh, really helped out with like Morton's, right? Yeah. Morton's, Morton, yeah. Morton Steakhouse and then Applebee's. So what, what they did is, uh, you know, they came in, they met with us, they tried the product and everybody was like gung-ho. They're like, yeah. oh man, this is, this is incredible. Let's yeah. do it. So, you know, we started getting into meetings, finally came to a deal, opened up the wharf. Mm -hmm. And the wharf did incredible in 2019. Like pre, we, we pre, pre, COVID, pre C19. Yeah. Yeah. So then obviously San Francisco, the city just shut everything down after mm. that. And it's been hard to bounce back from that in San Francisco. You know, as still... tourism really kind of never really like, cause you would know you have your boots right. on the ground there. Right. Has it really never gotten to that same level that it was in 2019? As no, far not as even like, close. Eh, okay. Yeah. Not yeah. even close. And like, it seems like the city's deteriorated even more. Yeah. You know, like they're not governing it right. I don't know what the deal is there. I don't get involved with the politics or anything like that but sure but all, all you all you know is your vantage point as a business right. owner on the wharf right. and and the business that you're able yeah. to cultivate there and then it's 2019 was amazing and then now it's been a, a more survival right survival yeah, since exactly. then and, and it's great to have a location there but um, um but at the same time too it's like it's the hope that there is some tourism right. and some right. some change that happens right. to uh and, grow know, that traffic again one of our biggest um drawbacks there is san francisco's allowing a lot of street vendors there so literally feet away from my location we have street vendors that sell the same thing mm. unregulated no licenses cheaper like cheaper because they can pick they're yeah, just allowed to do what they want mm. i mean they sell liquor out there they sell all kinds of stuff okay and the city you know they just okay cool go ahead and they're they're cool people man you know they're trying to make a dollar you sure. know which which is cool yeah but it doesn't affect my business for sure yeah i mean you know it does yeah and especially when you have to have a lot more structure and pay different taxes and right. have right. Uh, quality uh, constraints, right? Um, so it's always it's always just like like what you've been saying so far. It's always the balance of right. testing and figuring out and and figuring out what your markets are and where your where your yeah. best best placements are. Yeah. So so this Avengers that kind of came together. Mm -hmm. Are you guys still beyond the warp? Or are you guys still together? Oh, in, yeah. In how you approach each next location that opens up. I mean, yes and no. I mean, we've, you know, obviously everybody has a life and they all, you know, we're busy with our hands involved, but if I call them right now, for sure, anything, they're my good friends, you know, they, we've kind of, business is fine, but they're more my friends than anything now. Yeah. So if I wanted to reach out to any one of them, they're happy to take my call. If I have any questions, they're happy to, Love I go, it. I visit one in, uh, Chris, my buddy, Chris, he's, he's, he's a good guy. He's, he sold like 2000 Starbucks in one meeting. Oh wow! So when we do franchise that, that it's we're set. He'll be yeah, yeah. He'll be he'll be one of your, he'll be one of your go tos, and he is one of your go tos. Yeah. Um, I'd like to talk a little tactical and practical. Um, I know that you have a servant's heart, and I know you've shared your story and and worked with a lot of people that have started their own oh, food, yeah. food journey, right? Yeah. Like whether it's a smaller restaurant yeah. or um, a truck or any anything else. Because at the end of the day, it is a business still, right? It's customer service, it's food margins, mm -hmm. it's everything else. What's some tactical, practical for someone who has been thinking about, you know what, I really want to be in the food business. I, I like it. I have I have this idea. I want to bring it to life. What are some of the margins and what are some of the actionable uh, tips that they could take to really at least be started on the right foot and give them the best chance to actually succeed? versus sure. fail which a, a lot of a lot of food places open one year and close close, close the next close the next mm -hmm. right it's a it's a high risk type of business what what um tips do you have for for those that want to get started in food i mean the first thing that you want to look at if you have a brick and mortar lease okay for sure it's okay. the most important thing okay you know you want to keep that to you know five seven percent of you know what your expected revenue is going to be sure you know your your cost of food is you're probably looking at 22 to 25 percent right now yeah and that's being tight yeah because now obviously everything's gone way up yeah and when you're first starting out if you don't get those deals you might be pushing more of like a 30 yeah, percent margin or for 30 sure. 35 percent until you figure it out and shave the fat a little bit but, sure sure um you know your quality's got to be there your your employees i mean you probably want to keep that to 20 22 percent 
Okay. You know, that way you say you have margins for profit. Yeah. But, you know, in, in the times that we've seen all of the rules that a restaurant is supposed to follow right, have kind of gone out the window because now you can't get plastics. You got to source them somewhere else and your numbers are all over the place, mm. you know, and everything bottlenecked for a long time. And, you know, you're sourcing here, you're sourcing there. Everything that was coming in from China is now getting taxed a lot more. So, you know, you really have to look at your numbers. It's yeah. very, very important that you do. It's a numbers game. Yeah. So, yeah, it's you can't be, game. can't be, can't be lazy when it's looking at the numbers. And then, um, from what you've already said too, like a big part of it is also your mindset for how committed are you to actually right. getting this done? Because if you get in it and start getting a taste of how hard yeah. it can actually be of staying oh, on yeah. top of the numbers, on top of the employees, or if you're the employee, um, uh, yeah. taking care of the business, opening and closing every day, whether, whether you're in the mood okay. to do it or not, what, what's some of the mindset tips you've given for the young guys that you've seen, uh, really get into the food space for just trying to encourage them. Um, do you, do you have local, uh, group of, of guys that you talk to as far oh, yeah. as just kind of commiserate a little bit yeah. about the pain of what it is and kind of oh, hold you... each other accountable to just keep showing up and delivering, yeah. uh, delivering on that promise. Men and women. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, they, they're opening up shops and you know, I go in there and I try to help them and motivate because I think when they first get in, they don't expect what's to come, mm. you know, and just, Hey, just keep your drive. You know, the success is over there. We got to get there. Yeah. You know, like hey, this is a success podcast and I'm yet to see success. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it, you're in real estate, right? Sure. You go, you purchase a house, everybody's happy, but really that's when the work starts. Now you've started a mortgage for the next 30 years of your life. Correct. Same with the store. You cut a ribbon, you're excited, it's happy, everything's fine, you're cheering for that 10 seconds, and then it's right back to work. Yeah. You know? I, I, I heard it uh, somewhere recently, and I think they said it really well about, um, we're always celebrating people when they start something. We're also celebrating people when they when they close, like, hey, good job for, for trying, right? Um, but a lot of times I think we forget to actually clap for people in the consistency, like really right. coming alongside people and being, hey, you've been consistent for the last two yeah. years and and that actually being probably the most uh important right. thing that we can actually right. congratulate people for because yeah. along the way like the reason you guys are at where you're at now and have had the partnerships and grown to the level the only way you could have done it was consistency yes you messed up it, yeah. it, it hasn't always been pretty right but but in the end um that yeah. consistency is the bulk of yeah. the time for the business and and being on the being on the road for it right yeah, that's definitely the hardest part you know and and here in Modesto, you know, it's 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 about money. Yeah. You know, sure. um, like I read a lot about Starbucks. I'm kind of a nerd when I follow them. Yeah. Is that and is that kind of your ideal avatar is. for Mango Crazy it being uh, being the Starbucks of it your is. of your world? Yeah, and I read about how they navigate through hard times and, you know, economic woes and you know, I read about all this stuff. I read about how they develop their app. I read about, you know, their staff how they do their staffing and it's just it's incredible to me. You know, it's, it's like, it's like a dream and they've seen all the mishaps that we've seen, you know, they, and they're just like a play bot for, you know, what the future is going to look like. The only difference is they had a ton of capital behind them, you know, in 20, in 2008, when they first saw their, rev, their revenue tip and go down, they created an app and that app has brought, it brought like 18% more revenue at that time. And at that time apps were very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not like they are now. Yeah. And so, you know, they always had a lot of financial backing. Well, we're doing this from, from, from nothing, you know, as reinvestment, as, as sacrifice and blood, sweat and tears go into these shops, you know? Yeah. So there's some like technology, st um, uh, stacking that you right. guys are kind of looking into as oh, far yeah. as, yeah. as far as in the future there, there's always, there's always something more that you could, yeah. there's always something more that you could do, right? Yeah. I have uh you know, we're developing a, a app now. I mean, I'm doing it really slow right now because I'm, obviously we're really busy with caterings and everything. So, sure. Um, but we're developing an app and, and that's to come. And, you know, one thing that Starbucks taught me is that they, you know, they take, the people are able to load their app with cash. Yes. And that kind of serves as a bank without the regulations. Sure. Because now they're getting all this money pumped into their account. Yeah. And, you know, it's owed still in food, but they're able to take that money yeah. and use it for new locations and add no interest, mm -hmm. you know? So I learn a lot from them, and that's what I'm trying to develop now. Yeah. The you know, and I think I think it's always uh, going to where the puck is going, right? You're looking at people that are decades decades ahead right. of you and right. have figured it out. And I think if, if I heard you right earlier, um, one of your 
points that you're really trying to work on is raising up leaders within Mingo oh, Crazy yeah. because uh, at the end of the day, the only way that you can continue to grow and scale is that you have a leader right. that runs a location that's able to look in and see yeah. if there's fingerprints on yeah. the window, see stuff right. on the floor, just like how just like how the boss would, right? Yeah, and take and take pride of ownership in yeah. their store, just just like just like you would, and finding how do you how do you make it sticky? How do you make right. retention sticky? Right. How do you keep people on? And then also. How do you create such a great like leader platform that if someone works with you and then even if they go off to do something else, right, that you equip them so well that you change their life forever. Yeah. So you're you have impact whether they're elevating within Mingo Crazy or right. going going with going somewhere else. Yeah. And, you know, it's not the pay that makes them stick because obviously we're, you know, we're restaurant entry level sure. positions here. Sure. But I try to help them even outside of work. You know, if they're in school, I offer help. I offer help any way that I can to my employees. Yeah. And so does Andy. You know, we're, we're very family oriented people. I like to have that same in, in the shops, you know, Hey, we're a family. Yeah. I you love know, it. If you're heard about something, talk, talk to me. Yeah. Like we're, we're open. If you text me and there's a problem, let's talk about it. We can get over it. We can fix it. And I think that there's a lot of respect in that. Having yeah. those open, open lines of communication really does make, oh, yeah. a, make yeah. a huge difference in like, you know, the boss and you're not just some, some person that's far right. away, that's not available. Right. Um, and, and at the end of the day, like you said, uh, as you're growing something, you're still you have 23 locations, but yeah. in in your mind, I imagine that it's still it's just barely the start of right. what, of scratching the surface of what you guys right. could possibly do. Right. Um, I'm gonna pivot a little bit to I I know you've dropped family oriented a few times. I know you're very loyal to the people that you're close with. Um, a lot of people once someone starts having a lot of success, want to be close. What are some of the things that have kept you grounded with your family, and how has your wife and family kind of supported? the vision of, you know, having an entrepreneurial husband that has to, you know, uh, bleed, uh, right. blood, sweat and tears. Right. And, and not yeah. just yours, but their, yeah. theirs as well. Right. Oh yeah. It's very difficult, man. I mean, you know, my wife has stepped up, she's done a lot with the kids, you know, and mm. she has her own career. She went to school and, and completed all her education for her career, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, she spends summers with the kids and, you know, I try to be involved as much as I can. You sure. know, I try to go over there. Like I pick my kids up from school. That's our time. We go eat, you know, we have fun. Yeah. You know, and then in the evenings, the same thing, but yeah. it takes a certain kind of woman to stick with an entrepreneur. That's for sure. Yeah. As yeah. your kids, I know your kids are six and eight as, as they've kind of grown up to, or are they seeing, like, do you feel like they're becoming aware more of oh, what, yeah. what dad does, how hard you work and, oh, yeah. And, yeah. and what you put in and, and kind of inspired in their own way from a kid's yeah. creative perspective of me yeah. go crazy. Do they, do they enjoy the brand? Do they oh, like, yeah. like the brand? Yeah. They were born in it. You know, I, took yeah. them, I would take them to cash and carry on the carts, buying everything. And, you know, they still work with me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they still come in, into the warehouse or into the shops. I took my son to catering the other day. I needed hands. He came. Nice. You know, and he does nice. a good job yeah. for an eight year old. Yeah. He's, he's, he works hard. That's huge. And, and so, what's, what's cool is like being a, an involved dad like that, actually bringing right. him into your world is that w whether he gets in the food business or helps take yeah. over mango crazy or does his own thing in the future, the lessons that he's learned right. alongside his dad, it, you don't, you, it doesn't, the aha moments happen later. Like, oh, yeah, that's, that's what why. we're doing. When you're a yeah. kid, it's, it, it is what it is. It's either fun or it's not. And, yeah. um, and, and, and those ahas come later. So, uh, family, family being a big part, would you, oh, yeah. would you say that, um, you've had different points where you've had to make sure to kind of take a, take a step back for your own for sure. health and for your own family? Like oh, yeah. how, how important has that been for, uh, cause you know, uh, the brand lives and dies on you. So if you right. kind of break yourself at a certain point, right. And, and become unworkable, um, what's been some right. of your stuff to help with like burnout, uh, time away from the family and, and just try and I, and, and here's the thing when you're, when you're in the arena and you got the blood on your face and the sweat and the dust and everything, right. Like, you know, sometimes there is no relief, but you know, being in the game this long, you've had to have different pivots on that. Oh, what, yeah. what have been some of your things to help avoid burnout and to keep your family close to you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm still learning that. Okay. Every day I'm still learning it. Yeah. But, you know, we like to take vacations. Like, okay. I, I try to take a break from work, you know, at least a week. And Andy and I try to strategize and be like, all right, you go this week, I go this mm -hmm. week. And we, somebody's always here. It sucks we can't go together, you know, because we're family too. Yeah, you know? but that's been the beauty of partnership is that you yeah. know that if you go somewhere and you really have your phone yeah. off, um, uh, Andy, Andy can handle yeah. it or vice versa. Like, exactly. and, 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 and that's the only way to really have the relief yeah. is knowing that you have another commander right. in chief, um, kind of at the helm. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we have Henry too. You know, Henry's, uh, he's been with us since Kansas. So our second location. Oh and, wow. Man, this, this guy's something else, man. I mean, yeah. he, he believes in the brand 
you know, just like we do. And, you know, he's actually, you know, become a partner. Like we, you know, we've, we realize everything he's dedicated to the brand and he's, you know, yeah, he's, he's, he's a part of it. Where, it. where, yeah. uh, where does Henry kind of float in the organization right now? Does he uh, manage a few of the stores? He does or? everything. Okay. Yeah, Henry, he's, Henry, he's, Henry's a go-to piece just as long oh, he is. right there with you and Andy. Kind of yeah, the... Rosie, you know, Rosie too. Yeah. You know, she bounces around and tries to, you know, help us with the shops and it's just unbelievable that these people take time right out of their lives to be so committed to our brand. Yeah. And I'm, I'm blessed for that. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I'm sure what's, what's kind of nice too, I think uh, this is good for the audience to know too, is like, there is a point of uh, believability, right? Uh, yeah. And kind of going back to that consistent yeah. piece of like staying the course, uh, people that, you know, people are watching you, you just don't know that they are. Yeah. Right. So, so um, has it been kind of, what have been some of the surprises that you've seen kind of even from the community of uh do you feel a lot different level of support and connection and communication now that they've seen like oh you were just another food place that opened and closed like kind of uh, uh you know yeah, how how I is mean, how is modesto showed up in oh, yeah, central modesto. valley just in just modesto in general? showed up a lot okay unfortunately during the grand openings here was covid okay so like in series like the day everything shut down we had a grand opening there it was like four of us you know so you guys got trying to make it look like there was a lot of people on camera yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys got a picture. We get, we'll get some AI in there and put yeah. some, put, put, yeah. put, put the, yeah. put the crowd in there. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. this one was in September of, you know, 2020. So yeah, you know, it was right in, in, you know, one day we're celebrating that we purchased all these locations. The next day is like, what's going to happen? COVID hit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it, you know, navigated through that. It's a testament. I, I'm, I'm really proud to know you guys. Yeah. I, I really love to see what you guys have done and really poured in and, and what can grow. Yeah. Um, just to kind of end the regular set of questions that we have here, um, what is the three to five year vision for Mango Crazy? Where do you kind of see yourself going um, forward from uh, from this point? Well, I mean, I think right now what we need to do, our two year plan is to get to 50 stores. Okay. But I think that the, the ones that aren't being as successful, we may have to change those, modify, do something different. Sure. Uh, you know, the further out you get, the less brand recognition there is. Okay. So we're working on figuring out how to do that. A Starbucks did it. Yeah. They, they're they going gung-ho, they're opening stores, and then the ones that aren't doing as well, they, they shut them down, they move them. And so everything's a test still. You know, we're still trying to figure out, Yeah. you know, uh, who we are, what direction we're going. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, uh, but the, the two-year plan is to get to 50 stores. Okay, got it. So, so. Yeah. 50 stores, uh, franchising is still being debated yeah. inter internally. Yeah. If that's the best way or, uh, and or combination hybrid with partnerships. Yes. Every, everything else. Cause I, I, and I, and I can tell that this brand is really, really important to you. Mango Crazy is really important. Oh, yeah. So it's hard to, when something, when something is your baby, it's kind of hard to, uh, let anybody else have full permission right. to kind of, uh, right. do what they want with it, which right. could be, which could be good or, or it could be bad. And you never really know right. until, until you go. And, but, uh, you know, I, sorry. Yeah. But there's, you know, um, so we partnered with, with a couple in Stockton mm. and they have been absolutely wonderful. You know, they bring in new ideas and it's almost like a, like a rejuvenizes me. Like, it's just great. Like they come in with different ideas for marketing and it's like, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, good idea. Yeah. Sometimes your head is so down and dedicated to working. You don't have time to look up. Yeah. You know? And so the kind of the, the partnerships as you go have been kind of a, a nice way to always have a fresh set of eyes yeah. on the business. Yeah. They're they're putting skin in they're putting skin in the game. Exactly. Uh, they're 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 motivated. They're, they they want it they want to see it succeed. So they're right there with yeah. you. And they're not maybe so deterred by the day to day grind. Right. You're like, oh yeah, that's actually you can kind of get your head your head right. up a little bit and that's yeah. awesome. Things can go mundane real quick. Yeah. Stagnant. Just, I, I love know, it. Yeah. It it can it can get that way because you're so busy doing things and nobody's looking, you know, a few steps ahead. Yeah. So it happens. And so when you get partners like that, like, you know, Marcos and, and his wife, I mean, they're just a whole fresh, it's a young me again. It's like reborn. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they come up with all these ideas and it's like, man, that's great, man. Thank you. Cause now I'm, I'm alive again. That's, you know? the, that's amazing. So, and, and, and we need that on the entrepreneurial journey oh, is yeah. kind of keep finding ways that it's, it, it, you know, you get injected with that inspiration and energy and, and keep, keep putting yourself around people that are uplifting and want to keep elevating, right. elevating your story with you. Right. Um, just be real conscious and auditing of, uh, of, of your circle. Yeah, right. For sure. So, um, really proud of what you guys have accomplished. Thank um, you. We usually end the podcast. So we have 
a power three. So this is the three questions that we always ask at the end for every single guest, right? Mm -hmm. uh, first question being, what is something that you've been studying lately? I know you spoke about Starbucks um, that you've been getting into, whether it's a book or a podcast or a concept that you've really kind of been diving into that's a learning recommendation uh, for the audience. The book Extreme Ownership. Okay, by Jocko. It, yes, I love that book. You okay. Because it's, I have, if something happens in Atwater right now, if, you know, the, the case of mangoes falls to the floor, I have to be responsible for that. Yeah. You know, no matter what happens, it's my responsibility. Understood. And, and yeah. I have to, I have to wear it. You know, yeah. I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. Sure. I'm going to make mistakes all over the place. And it's, it's learning. You know, yeah. And I have to wear it. I got to yeah. own it no matter what happens. Yeah. Got and it. So that book is incredible, and I, think, I suggest yeah. it for a lot of people. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people get into um, a, a protection of themselves, uh, which is the opposite of extreme ownership, where it's like, hey, that wasn't my fault, or yeah. or, or emails that just you know you, all you're trying to do is kind of like cover yourself. But in the mm -hmm. end, actually taking that ownership actually right. leads the room to kind of fail forward, grow, right. and and keep having the success that, that you yeah. actually want to have. So that'll be that'll be linked in the show notes, guys. Extreme ownership by Jocko. Um, yeah. number two is, uh, one thing that's really important for me is that since there's a lot of noise out there with podcasts that people actually take at least one actionable item. Um, uh, there's been a lot of good nuggets here, right? You've dropped right. a lot of good stuff. Um, but what is one action tip that the audience could take today that if they applied, it would actually help change their lives. Believe in yourself because you're going to have so many opinions all around you and people trying to guide you. Even the people that are closest to you have opinions. Sure. But you got to believe yourself you got to yeah. believe in your heart your vision and you got to put your blinders on and then go forward yeah love, it, love that yeah a lot of things that'll lead you astray yeah and that's and then would you say that that's been a testament to a lot of the success oh, yeah. of mango crazies that you, there's a lot of people that try to steer you away from what you what you actually Correct. believed about where you and andy could go and right. what you could do right. and even even probably try to talk you talk you out of it right oh yeah yeah a lot of people a yeah. lot of people are like dude what are you doing you know but you know what you only have one life. All right. You know, you do what you believe. Yeah. So extreme ownership, guys, by Jocko. Believe in yourself. And then third question is actually a favor for me. One of the things that I always ask my guests on the podcast is we're all one degree of separation from, right. you know, something that's amazing. And, and one of the selfish reasons that I actually do this podcast is um, I love being around amazing people, just like just like ah, yourself. Thank you. Um, who is somebody that you actually recommend that I have on the podcast and, and would be happy to make an introduction to? You know what? I... There's a lot of people that I would suggest, but there's one person in particular that I take a lot of guidance from. Okay. Uh, there, there's a lot of people I take guidance from. Uh, sure. A couple, but there's one gentleman in particular that just amazes me with the way that he handles, you know, his success in his stores. He's an, you know, he's a franchise owner. Okay. For, for Domino's. Okay. And he owns, I don't know, 25 or something, a lot. And he's just growing. And the way that he teaches me to do certain things is incredible. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and his name is Greg. Greg. All right. Greg. Greg. Uh, we'll be. Uh, we'll be reaching out to you. Yeah. To have you on the podcast. Look, really look forward to yeah. speaking to you, man. But just an amazing guy. Just really humble and helpful. Like he's just the guy that you want to turn to when you know chaos happens. Because there's not a lot of people you can get advice from. You know, who twenty three stores. It's like, man, you run into things a lot of people don't run into. Yeah. So like, yeah. I can't go to my neighbor and be like, hey, dude, what do I do? He's like, I don't know. I'm a nurse. We're, you know. So this is the guy that, yeah. that, that I turn to a lot. And making, just, making sure you have people in your corner that actually can, if you do have a problem, can actually help speak to it because yeah. they, they're they going through the same problems yes. themselves or, 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 have, already, or yeah. have already done it. Exactly. Love it. All right. Exactly. So Extreme Ownership by yep. Jocko. Believe in yourself. Yep. Greg uh, Domino's Franchise Killer. Look forward to speaking to you, man. Uh, Larry, I really appreciate having you on the podcast. Yeah. I really love Mango Crazy. I love yeah. the brand. I love what you, you and Andy have done. I'm I'm excited to keep clapping for you guys and being part of uh, Mango Crazy in any way that I can to support awesome. you guys and and show love and and uh, look forward to this one dropping when it does. All Thank right. you very yeah. much, man. I appreciate it. Thank Take you. Care. Thanks, man. Likewise.